Uh, <laughs> here, uh, look at this hat. Huh? This, this is a real coyote hat right here. And uh, I gotta tell you, it's pretty warm. And, and it is, uh, it's authentic. And, and I don't know where you buy these. Greenville. Greenville. Yeah, Greenville. Yeah. Well, Ron Joseph is here. He has a, a BS degree in wildlife conservation and uh, Emma. Uh, he has a degree in zoology. Uh, he has written a book. The book is called Bald Eagles, Bear Cubs, and Hermit Bill. And we welcome Ron Joseph to the to the chair this thanks morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Well, thanks for letting me wear this hat. Yeah, you bet. Tell me this You look better on it than I do. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. You know, well, I, I used to work in Greenville. Yeah. Uh, I was with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife in Greenville yeah. and, uh, for a number of years. And uh, Casey LaCase, he was an uh, old timer in Greenville, he used to make these fabulous coyote and beaver hats. And Casey retired, and I wanted another hat, and I ended up, they ended up telling me, oh, you got to go to Glacier Wear in Greenville. I'll get, sorry, put a little plug well, in there, there for somebody. Yeah. But Glacier Wear in Greenville, they make, yeah. the, they make the best. Probably a line there hat. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So uh, great to have you on the program. Now, Thank you. We're, we want to promote your book. And of course, uh, you're going to make an appearance at the library. I am. In early March, uh, the Carabasket, Carabasket uh, Public Library has yep. invited me for, to do a book presentation. And then that's how I got connected with you, because she put me in touch with Nadine. And, yeah. and then Nadine said, well, arrange this. Na Nadine heard Moose Call. Yeah. <laughs> and we were all over it. Yeah, she yeah, did. We were all over it, yeah. right? And uh, uh, we, we're, we're hoping to get a demonstration. You know, maybe. I know, I know you have a video. Uh, where you where you demonstrate it? First off, talking about moose. Right. Uh, friendly, not friendly. Um, people often ask me, "What's the most dangerous animal in the Maine woods?" Ron, you're a wildlife biologist. You've been you've been in the Maine woods for your whole. What's the most? I say, without a doubt, a cow moose with a calf. People are surprised that they don't say a bear. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a it's a. I mean, I've had bears bluff charge me. They'll run up when when the cubs are up a tree. And the sow will bluff charge her, and she'll stop and snap her jaws. But a cow moose, it's not bluffing. How'd you know she was bluffing? Well, um, did you stare her down? You got to look. Yeah, I just just stood real still, yeah. and I've had it happen a couple of times where wow. she'll stop and snap her jaws and run around me. Yeah. And then the cubs fall out of the tree, and they want to be with mom. And then that she goes off. I've never had one, never had one attack me. But I have had a cow moose. Right. I got between the cow and a calf. Yeah. Inadvertently, and was pushed charge up on a on a brush pile. They they are really dangerous. Yeah. Cows. Now I, I I I know that you 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 do a moose call. That, did you say something offensive? No, I no. I didn't. In fact, I was doing a breeding bird survey up in northern Maine. Yeah. And she'd had it was in June, and she'd had this this youngster in May, mm -hmm. and the youngster came out behind me, and she was in front of me, and you don't want to be between a calf and a cow. No. So if those people who take photo photographs of moose and cows. Yeah. You keep, bear that in mind that when their ears go back and their hair sticks up, and they bend the cows bend over, that they're serious. You they're wanna, serious. You wanna you wanna back off real yeah. fast. Yeah. So I I, I know that. Uh, you know, you see them on the snowmobile trails, right? And and you might be tempted to, hey, let me do right. something stupid. Yeah, no. What you're saying is, don't. Yeah, do that. avoid them. Exactly. Have you ever had an experience where you had to like, you know, hide from them? Yeah, I've had, because uh, Greg Drummond and I used to call moose over at Claybrook Mountain Lodge, which was the next valley over, over in, in North New Portland, Lexington. They had a lodge, and we had moose callers, uh, a calling event every. Fall and a the moose weekend. calling convention event. Uh, yeah, we call moose for uh, for clients, yeah. photographers mostly. Yeah. And we've been we've been in some pickles where uh, the moose, a bull moose, snuck up behind us. You usually can hear them coming, yeah. but sometimes you don't, yeah. and they they can be real sneaky. Yeah. And if they get between you and a vehicle, um, you yeah. know, it's like everybody run for a tree. Uh, right. It's not a good situation to be in. <laughs> How is the moose population? They're declining, uh, unfortunately. Uh, these warmer winters we're having is boosting the winter tick population. Right. And some of the moose we have, they carry 50,000 to 100,000 ticks on them. And oh. That's, that's really bad. I know when I worked in Greenville, we routinely would check moose. Uh -huh. And uh, when they came into the hunter check station, and they had quite a few ticks on them, but not, you know, they didn't have thousands and thousands of them. And it's because the winters are shorter. Yeah. And the ticks live, can live longer. And the more, the, 
ticks are out there, the more they reproduce and the population goes up. And there, they can actually drain all the blood from a moose. Yeah. They, they, they can die, and especially hard on the, on the babies, because the yeah. babies are so small, the calves. Right. Um, so we, we, we have had some tough, tough winters for, right. for moose. Well, the, you know, there's a, I'm going to ask you facts or, fact or fiction, because yeah. I have this picture here. And, you know, we're getting down to the, the truth of moose. Right. Yeah, fiction. That's Photoshop. Isn't that pretty good, though? That, <laughs> well, that answers my question. Yeah, that's been, a, that's been around a while. Yeah, that's, that is actually pretty good. Now, I, I can remember looking at that photograph a few years ago in the office, the Fish and Wildlife office, and uh, so I said, yeah, that's pretty good Photoshop, but it's, it's, it's Photoshop. <laughs> well, we got to the that, bottom that's, of that. That's excellent. I hadn't seen that photograph in quite a yeah, while. Yeah, it's got the story in the back. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. How, how, where, where, what, where do they claim that was? In the, well, they, they said they, they kept it, it would just appear in the field with the workhorses, yeah. <laughs> and they kept bringing it yeah. to the, the logging site, and yeah. pretty soon they yeah. put a harness yeah, on yeah, it. No, that's fiction. And, and then it would come, and it would feed with them, <laughs> but they couldn't put two males yeah, in one trailer because yeah, the horns yeah. would rub. <laughs> That's pretty. That is, that's pretty. Keep it in the barn during rut. Yeah, right, sure. Right. That's the other thing. Well, yeah. you have to with me too. But. I